Today I'm in the small town of Nieuwdorp in Zeeland in the Netherlands to visit the Zeeland Liberation Museum which focuses on the Battle of the Scheldt. So here in this incredible museum you will mainly learn about the Battle of the Scheldt which was the longest and fiercest battle that was fought in the Netherlands which actually played out from October 2nd until November 8th of 1944, some 76 years ago this month. I did several videos on the Battle of the Scheldt and I would recommend you have a look at some of them. But to give some small history on the battle, which was a series of military operations led by the 1st Canadian Army, together with the Polish and British units to open up the shipping route to Antwerp so that its port could be used to supply the Allies in Northwest Europe. All of this was combined with a massive use of amphibious vehicles to beach landings and river crossings from Belgium to the Netherlands. This was a massive operation from the Battle of Hunstrecht and the bloody Black Friday fought by the Canadians. But being such an important battle, it's pretty odd that museums on this important event are rare in this region. Only for a few privately owned Atlantic Mall museums, this is the only one in this scale that focuses on the eventual history of Zealand during the Second World War. The museum also shows some of the history of the German occupation and the history of Battalion Zealand. This battalion largely consisted out of volunteers who wanted to fight to help liberate the rest of the Netherlands and Western Europe. This would also include the history of the battalion in the Dutch East Indies. But let's move out and explore the museum for a bit. So I wanted to do a walk around bit of the museum where I just explore and show you a bit of the layout. I'm not here to show the entirety of the museum, just parts of it. But I had to blur out sections that show a certain flag that YouTube claims to be a problematic flag. Even though this is a historical and educational channel. For this one I wanted to start at the back of the museum, just because I can. Um, of course behind me you have the gift shop and a small restaurant, but we are going to focus on the museum. Um, of course this is the liberation part, you have the, uh, the Dutch decorations here, red, white and blue and orange of course. The layout of the museum is mainly modern, a 25 pounder, a naval gun in the back and a weasel amphibious vehicle here with the movie screen. Of course this is one of my favorite parts of the museum, you have a few nice dioramas, we will get back to that in a short while. You have the fold up uh, boat here that was used to cross some of the uh, channels, the small bulldozer and the gigantic LVD. Now I'm a tall person, I'm almost 2 meters and you can see my perspective here. This is a really huge vehicle. Now on the right you will, you will have the gun display here. It has an interactive screen to the right here. But let's move on. Oh, I spot a problematic flag over there in that small diorama. That's not going to gel well with YouTube, of course. And it has four British or Canadian soldiers, Canadian soldiers, with several captured flags. Now moving back to the uh, movie screen and the uh, weasel on the right here and the 25 pounder. There's the naval gun. And we're going to have a look at this small diorama here. This is about a this is one with a PUC 38 in a nicely decorated diorama. Okay. So going uh, inside this hall, I'm not going to show the right. I'm going to show the left here. One of the uh, German dioramas. Like I said, I'm not going to show the entirety of the museum. Another uh, rarity here is a uh, Zuglicht or a uh, anti-aircraft searchlight with a, uh, a Flock 36. Another diorama here. And a nicely camouflaged bunker here. 
with a what I think is a 5.5 centimeter anti tank gun. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, it could also be a 5 centimeter one. Uh, this is the occupation sector of the museum. You have some small dioramas here. And hello, little piggy. And a bigger diorama here, a bigger stable diorama by the looks of it. But let's head out and have a look at some of these houses here of occupied Zealand. Some newspapers on the table there. Nothing really that special. Looks to be a general store with some goods in the back like parcel and some other stuff. Another household. Looks to be a Jewish household. And this is the uh, Battle of Zealand section, 1940 of course, with the Germans on this side, with the Pak 46 and a German motorcycle. And here on the left are the French troops, which played an important part in the Battle of Zealand. Some French anti-tank guns, French machine guns, really nicely restored. And here is the, uh, the movie section, the second movie section, because there is a large part on the ground here that has a large movie section. And that's the exit to head to the outside part of the museum and the museum park. But I'm not going to do that now. The museum was opened in 2001 and since that year it saw massive growth from a small museum building to the much bigger museum park you see today. And it seems with one of the bigger buildings not in use today, the museum will grow in the future. The main building focuses on the Battle of the Scheldt and the outside park is equipped with bunkers, a Bailey Bridge, barricades, Sherman tanks and a rebuilt emergency church from Elson Wouter Dijk which has been reconstructed and rebuilt inside the park. One of the bunkers here is a replica of one of these German bunkers on Sloedam, which had a flak bunker on the top and below a crew quarters, all built into the dike and camouflaged. The museum also tells the history of the village of Newdorp, which played an important role in Operation Mallard, which was a Scottish operation during the night of the 2nd and 3rd of November to cross the water and muddy fields of the Slough and move to Newdorp and Sloedam. Downstairs focuses more on the Dutch army before and during the German invasion and the ground floor section shows the Battle of Zeeland and the Battle of the Scheldt, with a really nicely restored LVT4, which is a rarity to see in the Netherlands and Europe alone. The owner also told me they have a second LVT4 in storage, which apparently is in running condition and this one seems to have its engine removed for display purposes. 
Moving up to the first floor you will have a great above look into the vehicle. And this is also the Dutch East Indies and post war section of the museum. Like I said before the museum has a semi modern feel to it and there aren't many parts that are overly dark and they don't feel the need to use an excessive amount of mood lighting. Like they do in many modern museums today. But when this museum uses mood lighting it's done in a correct way but I still prefer natural light to an overly dark museum any day. But I really enjoyed my visit and in my opinion this museum is in the top 5 of best museums in the Netherlands and I would recommend you plan a visit. And I hope you enjoyed this sort of new format of video which I was thinking of doing more of in the future so that you guys can experience the museum with me. But I will probably want a more genuine reaction from myself so I will start from the front entrance not like I did with this explore and start from the end and already have explored the entire thing myself. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of these live action reaction videos instead. If you want to support the channel have a look on my merch store or support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Have a great weekend and see you in the next one.